Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Hey there, and welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a more compassionate and sustainable world. I'm offering this educational and this inspirational show to you freely, but want you to know that your support really makes a difference. We are all in this together. If you would like to join in the vision to help make our world a healthier, kinder, and more sustainable place by making a donation, you can do so right on the TeresaNicasio.com website. If you would like to share your products or services with my wonderful audience as a sponsor or advertiser, you can contact me through my website as well. So that's uh, Dr. Tr- uh, I'm sorry, that's the TeresaNicasio.com website. T H, so Teresa with an H, E R E S A N like Nancy I C A two S's like Sam I O is an octopus uh, dot com. Oh, perfect. Uh, feel free to message me through the contact form on my website or email me directly at Teresa at TeresaNicasio.com. Be sure to tune in next week when Caroline Moassasi will be with us talking about food labeling and allergies. She's a mom of a couple of kids with severe allergies, and she's become quite an advocate um, and uh, doing some amazing things even on a, on a political level, um, on a government level with regard to this. And she's going to be with us sharing some of the latest and greatest information about food labeling and also share with us a bit about how what you don't know actually can harm you. For today's live program, excuse me, we have two awesome guests. Feel free to phone in during the program if you have any questions for either of today's guests. If you do call in, just let our producer, Jay, know what your question is so that he can pass it along to us during the break. And if possible, we will discuss, you will address your question right on the air. For those of you in the U.S., you can call in toll-free at 800-555-5453. If you are outside of the U.S., the number is 310-371-5444. Those numbers are on my TeresaNicasio.com website as well, so for your reference, if you decide as you're listening you want to give a shout. Um, so while Kim Vopney will be with us later on today's show talking about pelvic floor health, I'm happy to first welcome Marco Aguirre to our show today and say a little bit about this wonderful man. Originally from Mexico City, uh, Marco Aguirre was raised in a family that has been in the travel business for three generations. Throughout his 25-year career, Marco has held many jobs in the travel industry. He's been a tour guide, a travel agent, a hotel concierge, Uh, an airline director of sales, and over the past 17 years, he's owned and directed Travel Pie, a marketing and PR company that serves the travel industry. Under Marco's direction, Travel Pie has played a key role in positioning important destinations in the international arena. Marco received a high-level meeting planning training from the International Association of Professional Congress Organizers in Switzerland and from Keynes in Tel Aviv, Israel, which is one of the leaders in the field. He's a contributor to different travel publications, and he serves on a, on a variety of editorial advisory boards of the travel and food sections. We love travel and food of newspapers and magazines. Marco has been very active in supporting media efforts that promote travel and vacationing. Um, but today, uh, Marco is going to talk with us about the importance of using your right to time off as an opportunity to take purpose-driven and experiential holidays. Marco, welcome to the show, and thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yes. So are you, are you calling in from Mexico? I am. I'm in Mexico City today. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. It's, uh, it's a nice day, beautiful, sunny. Uh, I nice. Know that oh, that's wonderful. are not going through the same type of nice weather. So it's yes. just a perfect opportunity to start thinking about a vacation. 
Yeah, it's a great day to think about vacation. Well, up here in Vancouver, it's still pretty rainy, so we definitely are, are on the same wavelength on that one. Um, Marco, can we start um, by you sharing with us a bit about where you're interested? In? I love this 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 term that you've uh, shared, purpose driven vacations. You know, and you know, so where your interest in purpose driven vacations came from? Well, uh, first of all, because you know, I, I about three years ago when I was about to turn fifty. I had this aha moment where I realized something that's really obvious, but, but we don't see it as obvious many times, which is time is our most precious asset. It sure and is, Because yeah. of that, we need to use it wisely. Mm-hmm. And many times, well, first of all, a lot of people do not take vacations or do not take their full vacations. As a matter of fact, just to give you an idea, over 658 million vacation days go unused in the U.S. every single year. Wow. 658 million vacation days go unused. It's crazy. Wow. So, so, so the first step is claim your right to time off and take a vacation. But then don't stay home. Don't, you know, I don't believe in staycations. You really need to step out of your everyday routine and out of your comfort zone and travel or do something that you've always wanted to do or learn. And that's what I call uh, purpose-driven or experiential vacation. Also, that means not going to the beach and and doing nothing for seven days. Although, if that's what you like to do, I mean, you will certainly get the health benefits and you will relax and recharge. But there's so much else that you can do with your time. Like I said, it's our most precious asset. So we gotta use it wisely. Mm-hmm. Well, I really I love your passion about life and living fully, and, and it's I think it's coming through. So it's like around you said you were turning fifty, and that that's when you sort of the wake up call came up for you. That's correct. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and you know, going back to the to to uh, purpose driven vacations, what I suggest is that you listen to your heart and listen to to your passions. We all have passions. We all have things that we. We like to do or, or see, and many times we haven't had the chance to do those things. And many times we come up with this uh, story. We tell ourselves stories that, you know, oh, I'm too old for that. I can't do that. I'm not in shape. Uh, you know, that's for, for young kids. You, only if I were, you know, 30 years younger, which is, which is not true, especially mm-hmm. nowadays. The way that medical science is advancing, and, and, and I mean, I, you know, you're the expert at this, you know, by the way that we are eating and um, in a much healthier way, we're going to live very long lives. It's very likely that, you know, unless you have a, an accident or something like that, we're going to live very long lives. So the question is, what are we going to do with these long lives? Mm-hmm. To give you an example, uh, George uh, Bush Sr., he celebrated his 85th and 90th birthdays jumping out of airplanes. Hmm. So really, nowadays, age should not be, you know, the the limit. And you're never too old to learn something that you've always wanted to learn, to do something that you've always wanted to do. And nowadays, there's so many opportunities to do those things, whether it's, you know, art classes, painting, or some sort of adventure or extreme sport. Uh, or whatever it is that you do that you would like to do an experience, I'm sure that you can find the provider that will help you out. Mm-hmm. Well, I love that. It's very existential. You know, you're you're speaking about you know really living living our life fully, and um, uh, maybe I, I, I guess what I'm also capturing, I'm wondering, is this idea of vacationing is instead of keeping your bucket list for after you retire, which you may or may not get to do and you may or may not be physically able at that point, um, to really live your bucket list now and through, and use vacation as your medium to do that. Is that pretty, is that consistent with this purpose-driven theme Precise. that you have? Yep, yep, you got it. Yeah. And like I said, there's so many things. You've got to follow your passions. Make a list. Mm-hmm. It all starts with making a, a list. And in writing, uh, mm-hmm. because many times we say, oh, that's, that's, you know, that's on my bucket list. Really, what's your bucket list? You've got to put it mm-hmm. in writing. And, I mean, there's even research that says that when you put things in writing, when you set your goals in writing, uh, your chances of achieving those goals improve. And 
vacation should also be looked at as a goal. Many times people will say, well, but if vacation is supposed, supposed to be about resting and relaxing, not about working. Yeah, but the difference is that when you go on vacation, it's, it's your time. You're working on yourself. And that's the time that you should really use to work on yourself. And that's why also one of the reasons or one of the things that I would suggest for, for a purpose-driven vacation is to take, uh, you know, a, a, a personal development uh, workshop like the ones that uh, Tony Robbins hosts or Jack Canfield or John Maxwell. There's so many of them out there. Even Deepak Chopra, you could go to the Deepak Chopra Center and spend a week there learning to meditate and to eat healthy and get some amazing massages. And that's part of what I call a purpose-driven vacation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and for those of you listening, uh, some, some, some folks have been asking me, how do you find these great guests and so, so unique? So Marco and I met, actually, it was two years ago, Marco, um, in April, and just next month, it'll be two years. Um, we met in New York City. We went, I guess it could be considered a bit of a purpose, uh, purpose-driven purpose vacation. We went to uh, something called the National Publicity Summit, which was an incredible experience that uh, Steve Harrison puts on, uh, where we got to meet a whole bunch of um, of TV and print and radio producers and bookers and um, and and uh, had some training. It was so inspiring. That's where I met I met um, I met this wonderful man, Marco. And you know, Marco, one of the things you I remember you talking about was about the transformation, the transformative experiences that um, um, uh, you have experienced or that you've witnessed um, with with vacations and holidays. Do you, do you have any? You, you know, you'd be willing to share. Do you have you had any? Um, um, that you think would be that the listeners would like to hear about that you went on this vacation or you did this this uh, purpose driven holiday and um, and you you shifted because of it. Well, yes, absolutely. Uh, one is the uh, I mean I have lots of stories. Uh, my my life has been filled with breakthroughs that have always happened when I've been traveling, and mm-hmm. uh, one is the, the one that kind of I just mentioned uh, attending a workshop week-long workshop at the Chopra Center in Carlsbad, California. Mm. Uh, I was going through some rough times. I had just gotten divorced. Mm. And uh, not only was it very refreshing and I got to rest and, and have some really nice meals, but I learned to meditate. And it just changed my, my perspective. And, and uh, mm-hmm. I learned a lot about how the universe operates from a... Uh, Hindu perspective, which was really enlightening and fascinating. And I didn't have to travel all the way to India to get this type of insight and information. It was, Mm -hmm. you know, in California, just north of San Diego. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've also attended a a couple of Tony Robbins workshops and Jack Canfield, and they have all been great. And, and, And again, many of the people listening out there might think, well, you know, I don't want to spend my vacation working. Mm-hmm. Look, working on yourself. There's nothing more important. Uh, your life will improve, uh, I promise you. I mean, many people have had tremendous breakthroughs, uh, even career-wise. And let me mm-hmm. give you another uh, example of how travel can be so transformative. A uh, young guy from Seattle, he was actually from New York, but he was working in Seattle at this tiny coffee roasting company in the market right in the heart of Seattle. And his bosses uh, sent him to Italy to attend this um, coffee convention. And every day when the convention closed, he would go around Milan just visiting different coffee bars, because in Italy they actually call them coffee bars. This was back in the early 80s. And he was really amazed at the fact that while in the U.S. you could only get a bad cup of coffee in those days, in Italy, you could get a uh, cappuccino, an espresso, a latte, all these different flavors. But more than that, he was really amazed at the fact that the coffee bars in Italy were the bonding spot for Italian society. That's where people would go after work to meet their friends. That's where people would go on dates. And, uh, I mean, that really shocked him. He came back to the U.S. and talked to his bosses and, and you know, told, told them, we should start this idea of coffee bars here in Seattle. But the mm-hmm. owners of the company were not interested. And so uh, a couple of years later, 
this guy by the name of Howard Schultz, he was able to gather some money and some investors, and they bought the owners of the company out. And mm -hmm. they implemented what he had learned in Italy, and that's how Starbucks got started. Wow. That's amazing. So the idea, uh, you know, came to Howard Schultz's head when he was traveling in Italy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just one one little thing. You wouldn't, you know, going to coffee bars ended up changing the whole trajectory of his life, huh? Yeah, yeah, and and, and, and the world, you know, the way the world yeah. is coffee. Sure. And so there's, you know, a lot of uh, stories about people that had ideas and just incredible breakthroughs when they were traveling. Because, you know, when you are home, when you stay home, things are bound to stay the same. Nothing, you know, you can't really expect for any major changes to happen. But when you're traveling, you never know who you're going to meet. Mm -hmm. uh, I also know people who have met their loved ones on trips, uh, sitting next to each other on airplanes. Um, mm -hmm. I know people that have met their, their new business partners when they were traveling or simply came up with a, an idea, you know, after seeing something or smelling something or, you know, being under a waterfall. <laughs> they came back with a great idea to start a new business or just mm -hmm. to implement in their current jobs. So, so travel is really, really transformative. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's something to be said, I think, for doing some anything that helps you shift your perspective and, and exposes you to a different way of being. Like I said, when we stay home, um, you know, it's, it's more the same. It's, it's harder to break out of the, um, the way of thinking or living that we do. You know? Yes. So I say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if it, but if you know, if you want to have something different, then you got to do something different. So it's Absolutely. almost like it's an, an easy way to to shift perspective by choosing to immerse yourself into another another culture, even even a culture like you mentioned, Deepak Chopra, or going to some courses or whatever. That those are ways to shift. Yes, and another yeah. thing that's great since since you are the uh, the cooking with uh, kindness, uh, expert, mm -hmm. a, a great purpose-driven vacation is to travel someplace else in the world to experience food. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. And uh, nowadays there are many places where hotels, even hotels or some restaurants, will offer local cooking classes. This is something, mm -hmm. for instance, that I've experienced in Thailand. And it was wonderful. I remember in Chiang Mai, in northern Thailand, going to the market, to the local market, with the chef. And the chef explained all these different, very different and uh, even weird-looking vegetables and fruits that we are not used to uh, in this side of the ocean. And then we bought some stuff, and we took it back to the hotel's kitchen, and we cooked our lunch. And it was a wonderful way to spend the morning. And mm -hmm. We learned yeah. to cook, and now I can cook some uh, Thai specialties here at home, and it, it's wonderful. And you can have experiences like that in many, many places around the world nowadays. Yeah. Well, I remember when I was in graduate school, um, a friend of mine, uh, Beth, she uh, was a part of a group that was going to New York, New York City, um, doing helping build uh, homeless homes, uh, home, uh, homes for people who are homeless. It was a great initiative where uh, places that were crack houses had to be cleaned out and cleared out, and you know we were just excavating it basically by hand. Um, and then it was a situation where people um, who benefit from the homes, and then they also then participate in helping to. Uh, clean the house, and that was how I spent my spring break. Kind of an unusual way to spend a spring break, but but I think that that was that same sort of thing where it was very fulfilling. Um, and talking about cooking up kindness, you know, really from the heart, and uh, being able to be of service in a in a special way, it was really really pretty magical. Um, yeah, I just you know you've, you've talked a little bit about how sometimes people want to do staycations, and it sounds like you're opposed to them. Um, I'm not entirely personally opposed to them, but I but I appreciate the message that you're um, that you're pointing out because. I think it is that idea of shifting gears, um, but you know, there's, there's just to be a little bit of a bug in, bug in the uh, in the ointment here. Um, you know, even though there's all this t uh, vacation time allotted, and people don't use their time, um, uh, there's there's a lot of people who who don't do it because they're afraid of what will happen if they do. Maybe their boss, you know, maybe their their place of employment is not really a big fan of vacation, and they feel like they'll be seen as like you know, 
lazy or not not part of the team, or that they go away and they're going to come back and be you know just pounded with work. You know, how do you respond to that um, that that fear that, or that concern? True. Actually, uh, job related, um, I mean, I call them excuses. Uh, mm-hmm. are the number one reason why people don't take vacation. Mm-hmm. And there is a growing corporate culture in many cases where uh, just the culture itself is, you know, don't don't take time off. It doesn't look good. Or mm-hmm. people are afraid, like you said, of coming back to a uncontrollable mountain of work. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it's crazy. There are ways to, to tackle those issues, uh, mm-hmm. and most, most of, uh, of them can be resolved by planning. So mm-hmm. if, you know, if you're afraid of coming back to more work, uh, I suggest that you plan ahead of time and you let your colleagues and you let your clients or customers know that you're going to be away and ask them you know, to help you out if they want to talk to you or if they want to place an order or whatever, have mm-hmm. them do it before a certain date. And mm-hmm. do not establish that date the day before you go on vacation because obviously you're going to get pounded that day before you go on vacation mm-hmm. and you're not going to have the time to take care of all the business. So set that date mm-hmm. like a week before you go on vacation. So you still mm-hmm. have a, a week buffer to mm-hmm. take care of business before you go. And okay. uh, well, another thing that I suggest is, you know how when, when you're learning to swim, uh, they, they group you with a body and they tell you, you know, that, about the body system and all of that. Well, I think the same, the same thing should be established in the, in the workplace. You should have a body that covers for you while you're gone, at least to cover for emergencies, and then you cover for your body when, when the person is gone. Those, uh, are, great, those like, are great strategies. Yeah. yeah those those are know, awesome, just like, Marco. <laughs> just like when you're yeah. in the water, uh, the body... Mm-hmm. It's not just about safety, but it's about survival. Yes. So we need to take a break now, but that, those are fantastic strategies. Um, so stick around. We're going to be right back with, um, with Marco Aguiari after the break. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five six four six three. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, this same technology is available to you. They have the best Earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. Call earthchannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. Yumfoodforliving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit yumfoodforliving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit yumfoodforliving.com. Yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class, or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. 
You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. For those of you who are just joining us, we've been talking with purpose-driven holiday specialist, Marco Aguiar. He's all the way calling us from Mexico City, Mexico. That's where he's actually from, and he lives. Um, he's here with us, um, uh, and he's been talking a bit about vacationing and, and thinking about vacationing with a real different perspective as opposed to just being a, a place to just like exit life, actually um, he's talking about living more mindfully, entering life more fully. Um, and so before the break, Marco, you were talking about the importance of, of uh, vacationing, but there's, you know, that there's some, some barriers. And, and one of the barriers, I think, is, you know, we are living in a tough, kind of a tight economy right now. Um, do you have any words or thoughts about what might be some affordable options for a vacation um, for, for folks where, where the, the um, finances are, are a big factor? Yes, uh, but before I give you some options, let me, let me just point one thing out. Most people on a daily basis spend a lot of money on sodas, sugary drinks, bottled juices, energy drinks, uh, sports drinks, lattes, sometimes even, you know, cigarettes. And when you add all the money that people spend on a daily basis on things like that, at the end of the year, they'll realize they spend a ton of money that could easily pay for a really nice vacation. Mm. But mm. we spend little by little every day. We, we don't feel it. We don't see it. It's, it's, it's like it's not even there. Now, I'm not mm. saying to give up our, you know, your little pleasures on a daily basis. We, we all need them. But keep, keep them under control. Be mindful about them. And you realize, I mean, do the math. You know, see how much you spend, how many coffees do you have every day, how many, you know, sugary drinks. So hopefully you are not having many. And, and do the math, and you, you'll be surprised. You, actually, you'll be shocked to see how much you spend every year on things like that. And, you know, so if you don't have a lot of money to spend and you want some affordable options, national parks are great options. And when we think of national parks, we usually think of mountains and lakes and pine trees, and that is not necessarily the case. Uh, many national parks are historic sites, uh, museums, uh, very educational, and also they come along with all sorts of accommodation on all price ranges. Uh, you can do the camping option, but you can also stay at a five-star resort nearby within an hour's drive of most national parks. But the entrance fee to the park is very, very affordable. And it's something that I love to do. It's really, you know, it really fits your soul when you go to, to the national parks or the, to the national monuments, the national historic sites. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, you know, I, I've, I really enjoyed looking at your, um, your website, uh, Marco, and, and some of the different places you've been. And a lot of the places, you were in nature, right? And, and you were just connecting and communing with nature as, uh, as part yep. of your vacation. And I think that's that's. You know, and the reality is it's just like, well, where we live, we're very lucky, but where we live, we're just, you know, a few blocks away from the forest, right? And there's a forest, and there's, um, you know, in surrounding areas. And, and uh, so sometimes, you know, that, that's another way to approach vacationing on a budget is maybe even staying at home, but, not, but, but, but actually becoming a traveler in your own city, right? Is that, so that's another thing, but, but where you intentionally engage with things that you otherwise might not um, uh, relish in. That's true. It, and it's very, it's very common that people don't visit the sites in their own cities or surrounding right. areas. Because my guess is you've probably seen a fair bit of Mexico City, even though you were born there and have lived there a lot of your life. I was surprised. I, I have some, seen some of the highlights, but I haven't seen everything. Mexico right. City well, always is the city uh-huh. with the most museums in the world, over 100, and I've probably seen 10 or 15. Ah, oh, so there's lots to see still, which is awesome. It's yep. wonderful. Yep. Yeah, but like I said, you know, a lot of people don't, don't take the time to be a traveler or a tourist in their own cities. Yes. Any other any other hot tips for um, for in, less you know more affordable travel? Any? Yes. You know cruises. Cruises. Uh, when you break down uh, the cost of the cruise uh, per day, they're really affordable. And when you mm-hmm. think that 
they include all the meals, uh, most of the drinks, you know, unless you want to have premium drinks, but they, they include, you know, a very, a very reasonable amount of stuff, uh, entertainment. Of course, there's a lot of add-ons. If you want, you know, the spa and you want, uh, you want to go to the casino and certain tours and things, uh, the cruise line will then get you there. But uh, for the most part, cruises are really, really affordable. Mm-hmm. And there are great options. There are cruises going everywhere in the world nowadays. Uh, great ships, very modern, very safe. Uh, you get to see three or four or five different destinations on one trip without having to pack and unpack. Not only are they affordable, but they're very convenient. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, cruises are a great, great option. Right. Now and there's, for, you know, there's different ideas. Yeah, and there's so many different options on cruises too, right? So, I know I've been asked to maybe be a host of a upcoming cruise that's for charity, um, where it's an active cruise, where there's discovery, where there's ca- uh, canoeing, caving. You, you choose what you want to do: hiking, caving, um, um, all kinds of different sorts of adventures uh, as part of it. When, you know, at the ports of call, as opposed to just like sitting someplace and you know watching something. But yeah, so that's that's a great idea. Um, but uh, I know we don't have a whole lot more time. Um, and I, I was hoping we could talk a little bit about food. One thing, just you know, briefly, you were saying that you're finding that that food options for people like me who are troublemakers with food allergies and sensitivities um, is getting better. Do you have any any special words you'd like to recommendations around around vacationing? Yes, I think that uh, more and more hotels and restaurants around the world are being very aware of this. It's a growing need, and and many hotels and restaurants are now catering to people with allergies or certain uh, food restrictions. Uh, I personally, for instance, I don't eat pork and I don't eat shellfish. Mm -hmm. So many times, you know, as soon as I sit down, or even when I make the reservation, they'll ask me right away, are there any food allergies or food uh, restrictions? But Mm -hmm. even if you tell them, you have to make extra sure and careful that, uh, you know, to let your servers know that you have those restrictions so that they Mm -hmm. pass it on to the kitchen, have the hostess write it down on the reservation is not enough. You have to make extra sure, and even when you get served, so this doesn't contain this, right? This, this does not have any of that. Just make mm-hmm. extra, extra sure. But I, more and more, I think that restaurants and, and uh, hotels are catering to special diet restrictions. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, we're getting to the end of our time, Marco. Uh, first of all, Marco's information is on my website, TeresaNicasio.com. You just click on his uh, profile page. But real quickly, uh, what's your what's your website, Marco? My website is ThePowerOfVacation.com. The power of, and speaking of ThePowerOfVacation.com, real quickly, Marco has a book that's going to be coming out uh, about this very topic that we've been talking about today. And um, do you want to say anything about your book real quickly? We know next, you know, 10, 15 seconds. <laughs> It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's going to get you out the door like soon, really fast. You're going to want to go Great. on vacation. And as soon as that's out, folks, I'm going to have a link for his book on his website profile page. But we do need to go to a break again, but stick around. After the break, you're going to learn about what blueberries and milkshakes have to do with pelvic floor health, which you wouldn't necessarily think would be related to travel, but it totally is as well. But you'll, you'll, you'll catch on to that. Um, and you'll also learn why this conversation is not only important, but it's being called the new black. Um, you're going to love our next guest, Kim Vopney, so don't go away. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com. Or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com.
What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors, and their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that, because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com, and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. Yumfoodforliving.com. That's yumfoodforliving.com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. So excited to have you. (laughs) Okay. Thanks, Jay. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, where we celebrate everyday heroes and work together to help make the world a better place. Our next guest, Kim Vopney, is a self-proclaimed pelvic health junkie who specializes in pelvic health in pregnancy, motherhood, and menopause. Uh, Kim is a certified personal trainer, a certified pre post pre- and postnatal fitness consultant, a certified fitness for fertility specialist, a certified Pilates, not Pilates, but Pilates instructor, a hypopressive method trainer, and is certified in pregnancy exercise and birth programming. In 2010, Kim also collaborated with two other pelvic floor and fitness specialists to develop a system to help women train their core safely in pregnancy and also to heal their abdominal wall postpartum, and it's called Bellies, Inc. Uh, With her other company, Pelvian Wellness, Inc., uh, Kim provides core support products and services for pregnant women and new moms that prevent and help them uh, heal core dysfunction. You can learn a bit more about um, about, Kim. Kim and also gets have links. I have links for some of these amazing services and products on my website. Um, uh, so, but I'd like to jump right in because we have Kim and she's going to have a lot to share. So, welcome to the show, Kim. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. Well, let's start with the obvious question, Kim. I mean, pelvic health. I mean, I'm sure when you were like a little ten year old, you didn't say, "Mommy, mommy, one day I want to be a, I want to be a pelvic, a pelvic floor specialist," right? So, how did no, how did you get into this work? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah, so it, it certainly wasn't something that I was dreaming about or even knew existed when I was a young child, um, but it was my mom who actually, I could say, is a catalyst for getting me into this because she answered my questions. I was, cons- I didn't understand how childbirth worked, and it was mm-hmm. because of her stories, which weren't 100% ideal, um, that prompted me to take some steps during my own pregnancy to try to have a different story than my mom's. Uh, and that uh, led me to a product that I used to help train the pelvic floor for childbirth, and I became a distributor for that product. And then essentially I started to tell others about it, and it became a lot more than I ever thought it would be. But uh, the last sort of 10 years or so, I've really been a passionate educator about proactive and restorative pelvic health for women. Mm-hmm. So can you share a little bit about why pelvic health is important? It's one of those things that's one of the unspoken uh, things in our lives, but it really brings people to their knees in humility, when, particularly when things don't work so well. So can you talk a little bit about that and maybe what some of the signs and symptoms of uh, the, or, th- or, or what can result when the pelvic, health, pelvic floor health is not optimal? Yeah, so the pelvic floor is a group of muscles uh, that support the spine and pelvis. They help maintain our continence. They help hold our internal organs in place, and they also play a role in 
our sexual satisfaction or lack thereof, uh, some signs and symptoms that things may not be working as they should uh, would be, I guess, probably the most common would be incontinence. So that would be mm-hmm. losing urine when you're not sitting on a toilet wanting to let go of urine. Um, mm-hmm. And it's not something that is reserved for the elderly population. It, it, it can happen really to anybody, and it's definitely a sign of dysfunction in the pelvic floor. Um, pain can also be a sign um, prolapse, so that's when the organs, the bladder, the uterus, and the rectum are not sitting in their optimal position and may start to bulge into the vagina. Uh, mm-hmm. So those would be the most common. And mm-hmm. what is, uh, as you say, it's not something that's readily talked about. And typically, the pelvic floor is something that really doesn't get a lot of attention and is not thought about until there's a problem. And then all of a sudden, it becomes one of the only things you can think about because it affects so many aspects of your life. It's so central to so many things that we do uh, Mm -hmm. that it can really get in the way. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, you want to be active and and it it can really, it can be one of those silent, uh, seemingly invisible um, um, disabilities that that, uh, I think a lot of women in particular go around with, although men certainly also deal with incontinence as well. Yeah, absolutely. And it it really is a, um, it is considered taboo still, unfortunately, and a lot of women do suffer in silence, and they think it's normal, or they're embarrassed to ask for help. They don't know that help exists, and they just think it's something they need to live with, which they don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, one of the things that, so so Kim just was uh, one of the speakers. I was uh, at the Mompreneur Conference, which is amazing, in Toronto last week, and um, and Kim was one of the speakers. And I'm like, I've got to get her on the show somehow, so that's why <laughs> she's here today. Uh, and she had everyone in stitches because one of the things she was talking about was basically the old school of, of uh you know, of thought, which unfortunately a lot of, of medical providers, I think, still are, are still believe it to be the case, is, uh, you know, to do Kegels, and Kegels are actually not a bad thing, but um, but what uh, what Kim taught everyone about was actually the old school of how to do Kegels is um, is has been found to not be real effective. So can you talk a little bit more about, uh, a little bit about what Kegels are and um, and your magical blueberry and milkshake <laughs> uh, approach? <laughs> So Kegels are a pelvic floor exercise named after Dr. Kegel, who invented them, and he was trying to help women in his practice who he saw having difficulties activating their pelvic floor after childbirth. And so he used a biofeedback device to help women connect with their pelvic floor and their ability to contract and then relax the muscles. And what has been lost over time is in our population and kind of world that thinks harder is better and faster is better and more effective, people have really focused on the contraction part and the holding and the squeezing and not so much on the letting go piece. And mm-hmm. also, a lot of women, I think the study shows it's, it's definitely over 50%, I forget the exact number, but most women are doing them incorrectly and maybe using their inner thigh muscles or their glute muscles thinking they're activating their pelvic floor. So Mm -hmm. seeing a pelvic floor physiotherapist is something I recommend every single woman does, especially women who have had children. And even if you have no signs and symptoms of anything wrong with your pelvic floor, I still advise everybody to go get a checkup and learn how to properly activate your pelvic floor and learn how to relax. So Mm -hmm. in my work with women, I do not do internal exams. That's what pelvic floor physiotherapists would do, so they use gloved fingers. Um, But I work with women from a movement perspective, so I have to use movement and cues and visualizations. And one that that I use, which you heard me use last week, was uh, I get women to think about lifting up or picking up a blueberry with their vagina and their anus. And, you know, that usually gets a few giggles, and then they really try to think about it. And then I ask them to let the blueberry go, and that it should come back down and not as blueberry mm-hmm. juice. So that mm-hmm. seems to be one that uh, people can resonate with, and it gets a balanced contraction between the front and the back of the pelvic floor. But then more importantly, we're teaching women how to let that go as well. It's not just about squeezing and contracting. Mm-hmm, hmm And then you were also talking about, like, uh, imagining uh, uh, milkshake and a straw, with, um, like... 
Yeah, so I yeah, guess women can think of sipping a milkshake through a straw with their vagina. You can think about the kind of the bowl of the pelvis having a drawstring attaching the two sit bones, the pubic bone and the tailbone, and then cinching that drawstring and pulling it up into the body. Um, mm. I use an imagery of jellyfish, so I get women to look at a jellyfish and then apply that to their pelvic floor. So as they breathe in, the jellyfish is soft and open, and then when they exhale, the sides of the jellyfish come together and propel upwards. Great. Well, Kim, the time just flies. Uh, so Kim's information, just like all the other guests, is she has a, a profile page on my website. Uh, but your website, real quick, uh, Kim, is? Uh, pelvianwellness.com. So pelvian is French, the French word for female pelvis, P-E-L-V-I-E-N-N-E, and then wellness.com. Yeah, and so when you go to her, her profile page as well as on her website, uh, she's got a free gift. She's got a book, uh, Your Pelvic Floor, The Inside Story, free, a free book uh, that you can download. And um, and so I haven't yet downloaded it yet, but I, I saw that, and it's very exciting. Um, so that, anything else real quick before we would finish off, uh, Kim? Uh, everybody go see a pelvic floor physiotherapist. You don't need a referral, yeah. and do it uh, as soon as you can, and then do it annually as a checkup. Excellent. All right, folks, stick around after the break. I'll be answering your questions with the Because You Asked segment. Don't go away. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604 604- Four four five six four six three. If you're like the 8 out of 10 women that say finding genes that fit is a problem, well, your problem is solved. Lee Genes has done extensive research, and they have genes that fit. There's even an online Lee Fit Finder, so you can find the right fit for you. Imagine genes that instantly slim you with a custom fit and no gap waistband. And guys, kids, Lee has genes for you, too. Click through to Lee's Jeans on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page and get what fits. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! Plant-Based Recipes for a Gluten-Free Diet at Amazon.com or visit YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show, where we celebrate life, love, and kindness, while also acknowledging the challenges that are an inherent part of living on this planet. Um, now is the part of the show where your questions can be addressed. 
uh, in this Because You Asked segment. Um, to send in questions for a future program, simply click on the Ask Teresa tab on my website, the Teresa, and that's at TeresaNicasio.com. That's Teresa with an H, Nicasio with an N, one C, and two S's dot com. Um, or email me through the contact form or directly at Teresa at TeresaNicasio.com. Uh, today's question comes from Chris in Eugene, Oregon, um, who asked, Dear Teresa, my boyfriend and I have been together for almost three years and mostly get along well. I have to say, though, that I've come to dread holidays with him because we get into terrible fights every time we start to plan for a vacation together. It seems like such a small problem, but it's horrible every time. I'm starting to wonder about whether we are even meant to be together. Do you have any ideas about what we can do differently? Well, you know, I just want to say, Chris, this is a great question, and it actually is uh, reflective of much more than the vacation. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that and um, and also maybe give you a few tips here. Um, so, so you know, the reality is, is there's this, uh, you're not the first or last person who has had challenges in holidaying with a partner or friends. Uh, there's actually not, there's quite a few friends and relationships that have ended um, uh, as an outcome of, of difficulties with, with vacations and traveling together, so, or having conflict at least. So, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is how much vacation planning um, is a bit of a microcosm of other aspects of, of living and decision making, because it really touches in on our longings our longings. And as we had Marco today talking a lot about his what he's come to um, come to believe to be true about what uh, you know how vacations are, are meant to be. Everybody has a little different take on vacations. And when those um, when those differ, then it can it can be a, an area of conflict that is unexpected because you know we tend to think that what we think is the right way is absolutely the right way, and it's hard for us to appreciate someone else might have um, a different perspective. But to give you an example about how this can reflect on even bigger issues is, you know, think about if you're wanting to maybe consider a life with someone and create a future together. Same sort of thing. We tend to have certain longings and visions of how we'd like our future to, to pan out or in unfold. And if we want to partner with us uh, along the way and they have different ideas about the unfolding, it can be an area of big conflict. Um, and as a therapist, I've found that a lot of times um, – uh, talking about vacation challenges and vacation conflict is a great in for talking about some of the other communication patterns uh, that the that the couple has. So um, I'd like to speak a little bit about uh, you know some, how there's like different longings and and uh, you know again as Marco was mentioning some people uh, really are longing for rest uh, on holidays uh, and, um, and but you know others are wanting a change of scenery or or a new experience. You know Marco was talking a lot about like new experiences or an opportunity to learn something new, maybe an opportunity to play in a different context. Um, and some are wanting a healthy lifestyle, like, you know, when he went to the Chopra Center, uh, the Peck Chopra Center, he was able to, in, you know, in, you know in, um, have his holiday be focused on healthy living and learning some meditation and so forth. But then other people want, you know, want kind of the opposite. They want to have a chance to drink a lot and, and do a lot of things they might not otherwise do when they're in their um, regular life. You know, indulging, you know, food, alcohol, sex, you know, just like general fun. So it can look a lot of different ways. <clears throat> so having a, a conversation with your partner can be really powerful about their visions, about what, they, what they're longing for in this realm, because, again, it also is, can have a huge impact on um, or be very much related to how they want to approach the rest of their life. So it's, it's a very important conversation. I want to mention some other things that can can be part of the, the conflict that, again, uh, is not necessarily limited to vacation planning, but can show itself there pretty obviously. Um, one is about control issues and sense of entitlement. It's like I've been working so hard. I want to have the, I want to have my holiday. I want to do this for my holiday, and I've always wanted that, and I need a break, or I need to. I want to be able to do what I want to do. So there can be a little more passion uh, and intensity to the um, to the topic around vacation planning, which wouldn't be as big a deal as like figuring out what you're going to have, deciding what you're going to have for supper that night, or even what restaurant you might go to if you're just going to decide to go out for, to eat. Um, <clears throat> so the control issues can be a really big one, and again, it, um, it can be important to 
to have this conversation because likely some of the same control type issues might show itself in other ways in the relationship, but you may just be tolerating it or you haven't actually come across big enough um, topics or you haven't been talking about like the big, the big kahunas of, of the relationship and your future. So that's really important. Um, also, it can uh, another area of conflict in, in vacation planning can be around anxiety. Uh, some people really like the unknown. You, know, you can hear from Marco; he loves adventure. Some people may be more afraid of the unknown and, and struggle with anxiety and uncertainty, and so that can uh, show itself uh, around even issues around planning. Or one person may want to be spontaneous, say, "Huh, we'll figure out when we get there." And someone else might not feel the same way. So um, there can be that. There can be health issues. Um, there can be um, questions about what the purpose of the holiday is and the travel and vacationing. Um, and the other big one is it can be uh, there can be differences in expectations around intimacy, um, and uh, uh, and this can be particularly a hot topic when the relationship maybe is, is going is not doing as well, or there are already challenges around um, intimacy in the relationship. So. Uh, you know, while it might seem over the top, my best recommendation for you, Chris, would uh, would be for you and your partner to consider going to a therapist who is a skilled couples therapist to help you um, deepen your relationship and maybe even improve your communication um, strategies because it will be relevant for not just around vacationing, but it can impact the whole of the relationship. As, you know, you mentioned that you're even wondering if you want to stick around in the relationship, which would be tragic to uh, just end it um, without giving it a good go of, of seeing if you can change how you communicate with each other. Um, and so the other part of it is it's, it's an amazing opportunity to discover more about yourself, discover more about your partner, and deepen your ability to be um, compassionate and, uh, and intimate with each other on an emotional level as well. So I hope this is helpful for you as you move forward, Chris. And, um, you know, the time keeps flying. It's that time again that the show is about to end here. How fast this hour does fly. Um, thank you all for joining me for today's program. I hope you've enjoyed the show today and our wonderful guests. Uh, be sure to tune in next week when Caroline Moassisi will be here talking about food labeling and allergies. And, she, you know, some of the empowering um, messages and information she has to offer is great, uh, as well as maybe the areas that we still have to work towards with regard to food labeling, and we still have a long way to go. Um, you can send in any questions for me or any of, for, it, for Caroline or any of our other upcoming guests by clicking on Ask Teresa tab on my website. That web address again is TeresaNicasio.com, Teresa with an H, Nicasio with an N, and then uh, one C and two S's. So it's T-H-E-R-E-S-A-N-I-C-A-S-S-I-O.com. Keep sending in your great questions. It's such a wonderful opportunity to offer information that can make your life that much easier and healthier. So I'm Teresa, and this has been the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Bye for now, and have a great week.